play I have in mind deals with families, scandals, some, shall we say, saucy situations, and time travel. You see, there's a boy, and he wishes to be a minstrel, but he finds himself in days of yore, and misunderstandings ensue. Oh, well, that, uh, that all sounds rather lovely, actually. He finds himself in the village of his parents, and he accidentally injures his father, leaving his mother a spinster. A spinster? Good. Very simple. Keep going. He has travelled to a time before his conception, so although he is there, he does not technically exist. So, by incapacitating his father, he must take his place until he could teach his father to court his mother, because she sees in him the things her father saw in his father when he arranged their marriage. This must all happen in his past, their present, to preserve their future, which is his present, before he can gallop back to whence he came, time-wise. Well, it's, uh, it's rather a uh, departure from simplicity at the end there. Uh, how is it that he travels back initially? Is there a, a, a bewitching or an enchanted crystal or no. something? No, actually, the boy is befriended by an elderly wizard, and, and he sends him back. Sounds a little, uh... Ooh. Well, yes, but only when you think about it. You see, this wizard has discovered a way to travel back in time, I believe, as do a number of astrologists that I've spoken to, that if you could get your horse to gallop at a ludicrous speed, let us say 88 miles to the hour, that the sheer velocity would throw the rider back in time. My god. Is that true? Well, the astrologists have assured me that since no man has ever, nor will ever, achieve such speeds, that there's no way to really prove that that's not what would happen at such speeds. You lose me, though, playwright, with uh, this particular aspect of it, and this this young boy has galloped at uh, speeds known to no living man to an age in which he can make decisions with full knowledge of their outcomes, and he, he uses all that power to pursue minstrelry. We must all have dreams, my lord. Yes, we must all have dreams. You need some levity in there, maybe a poop joke. Maybe a character could hate poop, and we dump a whole cartload of poop on that character. Uh, is there an antagonist in this story, playwright? Yes, a hulking brute of a man. A man who bullies and intimidates across generations. Oh, I rather like the sound of him, actually. He, he sounds like someone who would do something, given knowledge of the future. Biff Tannen, that's a great name for a bully, playwright. You can't say it isn't. Well, my lord, is Biff Tannen really a believable name? Yes, I suppose you're right. In a play about a time-traveling minstrel, it's the name that's going to lose everyone.